I'm glad you give me permission to publish this on social media. Yes. Can I get your name, please? Katie. Katie, where did you grow up? Gastonia, North Carolina. Katie, were you loved as a child? No. Could you explain that, please? Yes. Um, I'm a victim of sexual abuse um, from biological father, which what led me into foster care and group homes. Can um, you go into that at all? Yeah. Tell me about um, it. Well, at the age of five, um, my, my biological father was touching on me, you know, touching me in areas that he shouldn't, in ways that he shouldn't. Um, one day, me, my grandfather, my grandmother, my aunt and uncle, their two kids, we all went to Myrtle Beach. Um, we were there for my uncle and my grandfather to go view a job. Um, shortly after arriving there, I see my biological father pull up and I get scared that he's going to make me leave with him. So I go and hide in Porter John. Um, shortly after he left, you know, my cousin come and got me and my grandfather started questioning me as to why. And that's basically pretty much when I just opened up. And I expressed to my grandfather the fear that I had of going back home. Um, we cut the trip short. Um, they didn't go to the job um, thing. Uh, we ended up coming back. Um, my uncle called the police. Um, and, and that's the day, you know, that the police got my statement and everything. Um, they called my mother, my biological mother. Um, I was asked to explain to her what was going on, what had been happening, and the fear that I had. And she basically told me that I was a liar. Um, and, and then that's when the police took it up and um, DSS removed me from the home and I was placed in, in the system. Which How is, old were you? Um, the day that I was placed, the age that I was placed in the system was about 10 or 11. Are you married? You got children? Divorced, two children. You were telling me that you were, at uh, one time or another, you were dealing with addiction. I was. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. So, um, I had moved shortly after I graduated high school. I had moved to Hawkins County, Tennessee with my uh, grandparents. Um, I had already aged out of the system at this time. So, um, I moved to Hawkins County, Tennessee with my grandparents. Um, upon arrival, um, I realized that my biological parents were also there. Um, my mother worked as a CNA, um, so she left pretty early to get to work. Um, my biological father and aunt and grandparents still stayed at the house while my mother worked, um, which I ended up renting a, a place, renting a room from them. So I stayed as well. Um, when, one morning I wake up, my grandparents are gone. Um, there was a family emergency back down here. Um, my grandfather didn't have money to feed me and support me on the trip. So he just left me sleep. Well, one conversation struck between my biological father and I and he had asked me a very vulgar and inappropriate question um, that I really rather not get into. But that was what made my decision to walk from Hawkins County, Tennessee to Watauga County, which is Boone, North Carolina. Um, I left about 9.30ish, 10.30ish in the morning and arrived in Boone about 2.30, 3.30 the next morning. Um, I come across the halfway house, which is where I then met my first husband. Um, and, and it really the addiction sort of started there. Um, it started off as alcohol. A um, couple months go by, you know, I'm already married and I find out I'm pregnant. 
Well, my first husband was a lot strung out more on alcohol than I was. Um, and then with me being pregnant, you know, it's not really much that I was willing to do. Um, we ended up being put out, um, which where we then stayed in the woods. So um, I called my grandfather, explained to him, you know, um, I was married, pregnant, um, and nowhere to go. So he then come and got me. Um, once again, come to my rescue, my grandfather. Well, shortly after I had my son, um, I had ended up getting pregnant where I had a miscarriage. And I was put on uh, benzos and narcotics. Um, I didn't really, the addiction didn't really start with that. You know, um, I took the medication like I was supposed to and everything, but it was very quickly that I no longer had the urge for the narcotic or the benzo. I had urge for something else. So I got addicted to cocaine. Um, I snorted cocaine for a very, very long time. I, I mean, I was in Charlotte off of Tom Hunter and Sugar Creek. Um, I was working at Leather and Lace, which is a dance club, and that's how I was able to support my habit. Um, so many months of, of doing that, my weight dropped, face was sinking in. Uh, my son had asked me one day if I was dying, and the love that I have for my children went far deeper than the love for my addiction. So it, it kind of hit me in a way that I was like, man, it's got to go. You know, I can't just leave my babies out here like that. So I let it go. Was this lifestyle of addiction dangerous? Very dangerous. Tell me about it. I mean, you know, you got danger in everything that you do. It, it's just how far are you willing to travel down that dangerous road you know um as, as to me you know me personally i've never had to sell or trade anything um body wise or anything for my addiction i, I made the money to support my own habit however i have seen those get get caught up in the thug life you know, um, where they were prostituting for their addiction or they were robbing and stealing for their addiction. And I've even seen some kill for their addiction. Um, and as far as the addiction itself goes, it, it is a very dangerous lifestyle. Um, the severity of the danger just depends on the choices that you make and how far you're willing to take it, you know. Um, I've seen quite a few people in in my circle and in my life that has dropped just like that from the addiction. If they would have had the support, would they have? It's possible. But there would have been a bigger chance that they wouldn't have if they would have had that, that support. What would you like people to understand about addiction? Addiction is not always a choice. You know, sometimes things are tossed at you and and with the way the human mind works, you know, the vulnerability in in touchy situations and struggles, you know, you feel as if that's the only thing you get love from. Is that necessarily the, the truth or the case? No, because addiction doesn't always bring love. You know, it doesn't bring love at all. It just brings more trouble. However, uh, you know, it, it's just addiction is not always a choice. Sometimes you're you're put up against the wall to where that is the only outcome that you have is addiction. Um, there, I, I've known a lot of people that has been strung out and addicted that doesn't want to be addicted, but they don't have the support nor the 
the self-confidence to stop the addiction. Like for me, I was able to drop it. The only reason I was able to drop it is because the love and support that I had for my children. The love and support that I not only had for them, but the love and support that I received from them. My children, and they may be, you know, it may have been they were too young then to know and understand it now. But, you know what I'm saying? My children are my heroes. My children are what opened my eyes to realizing that no matter what I did then, they were always there. They wasn't giving up. And I think that the love I had from them is really what gave me the courage and the strength to say, okay, I'd rather have this than that. I'd rather have the love and support from them than the addiction. Because the addiction, yeah, it loved me, but it only loved me for the five minutes that I was high. Then it was gone. All my problems were right back to where it was. But on this hand, I had the love and support from my children, which has never went away. It's unconditional. No matter how high I got, they were there. No matter how low I fell, they were there. You know? I know for me, addiction was uh, basically, it was trying to cover up something I didn't want to face. Right. I didn't want to deal with. Right. It's like a generational curse. You know, you got all these generational curses. And where we fail to realize is we have the power to break these curses. Whether or not we choose to take that road is strictly upon us and our decision, but we do have the means to stop the generational curse. When my son was probably a little over a year and a half, two years old, my daughter was no more than six months. I signed my children up for adoption because of the lifestyle I was living. Now, don't get me wrong, I fought for them. I fought for them for three years. Never gave up. Right here in Gaston County, I fought for them. But too many obstacles were being thrown at me and not enough support was being there to catch each obstacle. And it got to be overwhelming. I couldn't do it. I, I was alone, I was young. You know, I had my son at 18 years old, I had my daughter at 21. I was still a baby myself, you know? The only good thing at that time that I had going for me was a high school diploma. So, you know, it, it got to be very difficult. So I signed my children up for adoption. Was it a, a difficult decision? Absolutely, one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my 32 years of living. Very hard, but in the same sense, very grateful. My children were adopted out to a pastor and his wife, who is now deceased, God rest her soul. Um, but they love my children. They, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about my children, you know? But at the end of the day, in my heart, I know when I lay my head down, I know that my children are safe. How old are they now? My son is 13, my daughter's 11. What's your uh, biggest fear? My biggest fear is, oh, I have a couple, <laughs> but my biggest fear is my children seeing me as a failure. Nothing else. I, I have many fears, you know, but my children are my main focus, my main concern. Um, how they feel about me, how they feel about life, how they feel about their life. All of that is the only thing that matters to me. How long have you been out here in Gaston County in the street? Well, I grew up here in, in Gaston County. Um, however, back in 2019, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia to better myself um, because I was strung out. Uh, not, not strung out so much as, you know, on drugs or anything like that, but I, the mindset that I was in was, you know, legal trouble, you know, couldn't, couldn't really stay out of legal trouble. So I took a better step for myself and I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. 
um, within the time frame that I was in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, I had gotten on my feet, I got employed, you know, I maintained, I was in Atlanta for about five, six years, um, doing pretty good, you know, and I just, it's, it just wasn't where my heart was, you know, my children are not in Atlanta, Georgia, and Atlanta, Georgia was a pretty good distance from my children, so, you know, my heart was, was here because my children are here. So I moved back. Now, you know, whether or not I always get to see my children or whether I always get to talk to my children, the, the comfort of me being in the same state, in the same county or in the same town as my children is, is good enough until I can get to the bigger step, which is being able to see my children, talk to my children, do for my children as I want to. At this stage in your life, what's the most important thing you've learned? The most important thing that I've learned is, you know, I, I had a kindergarten teacher, and how I remember this, I don't know, you know, but one of the things that I can remember her telling me is that no question is a dumb question other than the question unasked. So one of the things that I've learned with being out here is I don't keep my mouth shut. And some would say that's a bad thing. Some would say that's a good thing. Me, it's not all about what you say, but how you say it. So, you know, one of the things that I've learned is that if I see something or I don't understand something or I need something, I've learned to open up and ask, you know, I don't, I don't just sit around and keep my mouth shut. If I need help, I'm asking for it. I may not ask all the time or there may be certain people I ask and certain people that I don't ask, you know, but I don't hesitate in letting people know, hey, I'm struggling. Can you help me? Or do you have resources to where I can go to get help? You know, I'm, I'm one of those that I take constructive criticism very well. If you see me out here doing something you know I shouldn't or that I know I shouldn't or that's not going to benefit me, tell me about it. Help me. That's what we're here as a community to do. That's what we're here for, to help one another, not bring one another down, not kick us while we're down but to lift you up, you know what I'm saying? So talk to me, tell me about it, you know, because if I see you out here doing something and you're not supposed to do it or it's going to bring you more harm than good, I'm going to say, hey, I wouldn't do that, you know. I'm going to give you advice, and if I got resources, I'll give you those too, you know. Sharing is caring. If I got it, you got it. What word of advice would you give to those who are trying to come out of addiction? Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. You know, I tell people all the time, I'm not Dish Network. You can't mass rewind on me. I don't move back. I move forward. You know what I'm saying? And like right now, the time in my life, addiction is back. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving forward. I, I got bigger and brighter things laid out ahead of me. There's a journey much further ahead of me, and I intend on getting to it. And my advice would be keep your head up and keep moving forward. As long as you got God on your side, you're straight. Because he's the best friend that any, anybody could have, you know. And I, I have a very selective few friends out here in this world. And that's not just in Gastonia or Lincolnton or Cleveland or, you know, Georgia. I have a very selective few friends all together. And it's not because I'm a stuck-up person. It's not because, you know... It's for the main reason of God has been my only true friend. Young lady, we appreciate this interview. Absolutely.